Holy shit. That looks so good. Wow, it's like, uh, it's like wearing glasses for the first time. Well, that wasn't packed well enough. That is definitely broken. I don't even know if this stays on here anymore. Nope. Well, it's really unfortunate. This right here is a Nikon CoolScan 4, and I just ordered it off of eBay about a week and a half ago. Um, and it arrived in the mail today, and the faceplate's broken. So, Clearly the carrier had a little bit of a uh, fun time with it. It's pretty messed up. We got a few shards here. They were all inside of the chassis here and it's all broken down here and all cracked up here as well. Um, so I had to open it up and fish them all out. While I had it open, I cleaned off the mirror as well and um, the improvements from doing that, um, I had done a scan here and uh, unfortunately I didn't save it. Um, but it had what looked like a giant um, hair kind of in the center of the frame. Um, turns out it was just a giant um, smudge or something. Uh, so I, I opened it up, took all the little pieces out of there, cleaned off the mirror, and uh, the scans are really sharp now. Um, but so the scanner does physically work. It's just uh, unfortunately the faceplate is all uh, broken, which is a shame because it came with the box and all the original packaging and the manuals and it looked on the listing to be like it was in really good shape. So I was excited to have a near mint condition unit. So yeah, why did I decide to buy myself a, how old is this thing? A 23 year old film scanner. Well, because it's better quite a bit better as it turns out actually. When I started film photography just a couple years ago, initially I was getting all my scans done by the lab. Um, turns out they were pretty bad. Um, so I got myself a Epson V600 photo perfection, whatever. Immediately, big improvement. I uh, started scanning them and converting them in Lightroom using Negative Lab Pro. But the problem is the scans never quite felt sharp. Like they were fine for posting to Instagram. When I take a photo, I like it to be sharp and to, I like to admire my my own work um, when I look at it on the computer. But the scans just never really felt satisfied. So I went ahead and ordered a uh, Nikon Cool Scan. So what I'd like to do today, now that I have this all cleaned up and working, um, I actually have it working on Windows 11 here. Um, no idea why anyone has any problems getting these things to work. I googled Nikon uh, scan and uh, just downloaded it from Nikon's website. I'm running the 4.0 version. Um, plugged it into USB using a USB type B USB 2.0 cable. Um, it's actually plugged into my monitor and then the monitor hub is going into the computer. So it's actually not plugged directly into the computer even. Windows 11 immediately recognized it in device manager. No problems with the driver there. So I installed the Nikon scan. It did throw an error initially um, saying that this operating system isn't supported. So I just right clicked preferences or properties and enabled compatibility mode for Windows XP Service Pack 2. Close that, ran it again, immediately worked. When I launched the program, I also enabled uh, compatibility mode once again for Service Pack 2. Um, and just immediately, no problems. Uh, Digital ICE works. Uh, I haven't tried bulk scanning yet, um, but from what I can tell, all the settings work. It did cra uh, freeze on me once when I was trying to change uh, one of the settings, but uh, all I did was uh, ex like, killed the program, reopened it, the setting had saved. So, but other than that, it's been working completely fine for the one hour that I've been using it. But yeah, um, so today I wanted to kind of do a quick comparison between this one and my old V600. So without further ado, shall we begin? For the comparison, what we will be using is some Provia 100F. Um, got some nice car photos here. Oh yeah, oh, this will be a good one. Um, this is Fuji. Um, and so when I scan this on my V600, 
Um, it couldn't quite get through the, uh, I, I guess I underexposed it a bit so that I could get the sky. Um, slide film's a little tricky. So um, across these three photos, these they're all quite contrasty. And I would like to see, apparently the cool scans are really good at punching through um, dense uh, film. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how much detail the cool scan can get out of these compared to what the V600 was able to achieve. So let's get into it. God damn it. Didn't have to. I think that's together properly now. Shall we begin? making noises. I don't know if uh, how loud this is, but one cool thing about these scanners is they actually have autofocus. Um, so while the uh, Epson is a fixed focus, um, basically, so if your slide is at the wrong or your film is at the wrong elevation over the scanner bed, it'll be blurry. Um, these ones have autofocus in them. So the whole head moves and uh, finds the optimal focus when it before it uh, does the scan. So that really helps with getting things uh, nice and sharp. Let's see here. That makes sense. Have to go this way. Rotate. Yeah, it's upside down. So screen side goes towards the, or downwards, where I thought the sensor would be. And there we go. Ooh. Oh, all right. This is pretty good. I like that. I can only imagine what uh, one of the higher end models would be like. All right. To the secret lab. So here's our original and here's the edit. Um, I think it came out pretty well. Um, could probably increase the saturation on this a bit still and maybe uh, bump up the warmth. Bring some magenta in. S shot during sunset. Um, so let's compare this to the V600 photo, which I'll probably have to import here. All right, we'll be fair here. We'll give it some edits as well. Okay, so here's the V600 scan. Um, the shadows are very purple. Um, so I'm going to give it a bit of a helping hand here in the shadows. Just uh, correct for that strong purple cast about right there. Um, and I think that looks uh, pretty similar. All right, so on the left here, we have the Epson, and on the right, we have the Cool Scan. And you can already tell how much sharper the Cool Scan is over the Epson. It's not even close, actually. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the Nikon definitely has the more natural colors. I do like that there's a bit of purple in this one, um, but I mean, I would just add that in editing. Um, the purple's only here because of uh, because it's ba it basically scanned the colors wrong. Um, yeah, wow, that is crazy how much sharper it is. Like you can you can see the windows on this house. These, they're, they're, they just look like they're part of the trees on this one. Holy crap. You got like some detail in here too. That's actually crazy. Look at the lights. Uh, I think, yeah, wow. So you actually have individual lights here. They're not just like blurred together. A bit of uh, dust here that I could remove. Holy smokes. All right, let's go on to the next photo. So editing here, if I select the sky, um, it does look like the sky is completely blown out. Um, there's not really any any good way to recover that. So, um, but that's just slide film being slide film. Um, so one on the left is the Epson and one on the right is the cool scan. So if we let's zoom in and check some sharpness here. Oh yeah. Uh, so the Honda logo and the license plate are a lot sharper on the Nikon. Got a lot more detail in the reflectors. How about the pavement? Oh yeah. You actually have detail in the pavement on the Nikon. Yep, just everything, far more detail. 
As far as colors go, honestly, the colors on both of these are pretty good. Um, I do like the overall cooler tones on the cool scan. Um, this one looks uh, kind of orangey almost. It, it's a red car and I'm kind of seeing orange hues. Um, and then you can see that in the trees as well. The trees are more of a yellow, yellowish green than a uh, bluish green, which I tend to prefer blue greens in my trees. Um, I am also noticing that the Nikon definitely punched through the um, slide a lot better. Um, you can see that we actually have some of the grain and detail and stuff on the hood of the car here, whereas on the uh, Epson, it's completely blown out. So definitely has a, a bit more punch power on the on the backlight for that one. All right, so once again, we have the Epson on the left and the cool scan on the right. Um, so let's zoom in here, check the sharpness. Um, so yeah, immediately you can see the writing on the hub of the wheel. Um, the headlight patterning has a lot more details. Um, same with the reflectors. And the writing on the license plate as well. It's a lot more crisp. Same with the Porsche logo. You can actually make out a lot more detail on the Porsche logo there. Um, as for colors, this one's pretty close. The, per uh, the Porsche definitely has a purplish hue over in the Epson, um, kind of a trend. The Epson seems to prefer to give dark colors a purplish hue. Um, I don't know how much of that is the Epson and how much of that is uh, silver fast, but it is what it is. Um, can easily be corrected. Um, again, we have the really warm hues in the trees again. I prefer the cooler hues. Yeah, it, this, this photo doesn't have a whole lot of highlight peaking in it. Um, so it really just comes down to the Nikon being sharper and um, producing better colors. All right, this photo I'm not going to edit. Um, I, I, I brought down the highlights on both of them just a bit to see how much recovery there was. Um, I didn't want to go too far because then you start losing the brightness in your whites. Um, but yeah, you can see just how much more the, the Nikon is able to punch through the, the density on the film. It's, uh, it's quite an improvement, actually. Um, and from my understanding, the CoolScan 4 um, doesn't even have that much uh, more power on the on its backlight. The five, the 4,000, 5,000, 8,000, and 9,000 are a lot, um, from what I understand, have a lot more power on their backlights and can punch through these lots a lot easier. Also, the writing on the engine cover here, it's like, it's not even close. Like, look how much more, first off, the sharpness, but also like the saturation on the coloring here. Like, you can... Um, like if you're zoomed out here, you, these, these look, mm, I guess you can see some red, but they look pretty white. Um, and these ones, like you actually can see the red on there. Yeah, just so much better from the Nikon. All right. And our last comparison here, the GTR, um, I just did very light edits on these ones, kind of, um, brought up the shadows. Um, the, actually I can probably show you, um, this, uh, the Epson one here, it's super dark. Um, so I had to basically punch, punch the shadows all the way up on there. Um, and whereas the Nikon, um, pretty much, uh, exposed way better. I did have to punch the shadows up still almost 50 points, but a lot better than the, the, uh, Epson was. Um, so once again, Epson on the left, uh, Nikon on the right, you can tell cause the Epson's pretty purple once again. Um, but yeah, let's see here. First off the wheel on the Nikon way sharper, way sharper. Um, yep. You got way more detail once again, the reflectors, how about the badge? Badge is pretty close, definitely sharper on the Nikon, but overall pretty close. Um, also you can see some of the detail in the grill here. Um, no detail in the grill at all on the Epson. Um, how about our highlights here? Um, I don't know how much of this is from just the Nikon being sharper, but you definitely have some reflections on the hood here, whereas here it's kind of just all white, um, or maybe a baby blue. And then obviously you have that purple hue in the Epson, but yeah, 
Cool scan definitely blows the Epson out of the water. Not even close. Um, now, don't get me wrong. The Epson is still better than um, a lot of the lab scans that I've got from, uh, I believe, the the lab that I use, uh, London Drugs. Um, I believe they use a... So here's one of the photos from uh, a lab scan. So honestly, you can tell it's not very sharp at all. Um, has very strong green hues, classic uh, Nuritsu. Plus uh, the lab scans, they were given to me in JPEG. Um, if I look at it in media info here, I only have eight bits of data, so I can't even really do much, a whole lot of editing. So basically however I receive them is what I get. So yeah, that wraps up this video. Um, if you are on the fence between getting a cool scan and a Epson, I would say strong choice to go with the cool scan as long as you can get it working. Keep in mind that the four and the five um, use USB and the 4,000, 5,000, 8,000 and 9,000 from my understanding use Firewire. So if you want to do that, you will need either an old, a lot of people what they'll do is they'll get an old laptop or an old iMac or something that has Firewire on it and they'll just plug it in um, and do it that way. Um, the Mac version of cool scan I think is a mod, a lot less stable than the Windows version, funny enough. Um, so do be careful if you're gonna go that route. Um, I, uh, I can link it down below, but I got a Firewire card for um, my second computer over there that I've been using to plug in uh, mini DV camcorders, and it's been working completely fl uh, flawlessly. Windows 10, plugged it in, no driver issues, just immediately recognized it. So um, I think, uh, I have a 4000 coming in the mail, so um, when I receive that, I'm going to get a FireWire card for this computer as well, and I'll try hooking it up and see if uh, CoolScan works immediately or if it requires tinkering, because um, this computer's Windows 11, so that'll be interesting. Do keep in mind that if you do buy one of these off of eBay, a lot of them only come with the... Ba -ba -ba the MA20 slide mount adapter. Um, so if you get one of these and it only comes with this, uh, all you can scan are slides. You will need the uh, bu -bu -bu Nikon FH3 film strip holder um, in order to scan negatives with this. And if you do that, I believe you can only do, and it looks like it takes a strip of six frames. I think the, I don't know how this works. This probably slides. Um, maybe look up a YouTube video on how that works, um, or I can make a short about it. But um, it will be pretty limiting on how you can uh, how you can scan. So that's the whole reason I bought this one was because buying a SA21 was basically the same price as just buying this one with an included SA21. So now I have a cool scan for, um, and I'll have an extra uh, MA20 as well. Anyway, I've been rambling. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed, um, if those things even mean anything anymore. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions while I uh, am tinkering with these. I would love to make more videos on them. Um, I find old technology completely and utterly enthralling. Um, I have a few VCRs and stuff over there. Maybe I can make a video on how I digitize uh, tapes and stuff too. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, take it easy.